Good morning. My name is uh, Gerald Smith, I'm product manager at the Multi Faction, and I'm very happy to uh, do a presentation today or a webinar on um, Contrast 3.0. And what I really want to uh, show today is what Contrast 3.0 brings to the table, what happens if you upgrade from Contrast 2 to any version of Contrast 2 to Contrast 3.0, and Basically, how easy it is to use Contrast 3.0. Um, Contrast 3.0 has a lot of extra possibilities, um, which some of the material that has been sent to you already is showing. Um, if you don't need it, you don't have to use it. So it, it, it's not. It, it doesn't have to be complicated for you if you don't want to make it complicated, more complicated than uh, 2.0 is. So maybe the first change you'll see is this. We call it welcome screen. So if you walk into um, uh, a video wall, like you had before, um, with Contrast 3.0, you will get a welcome screen. And maybe in the future we can do much more of this, but we started with quite a simple welcome screen. You can set up a, a default canvas, open any canvas, or basically exit at the moment, or restore a previous session if, if, uh, if, you, if you close it in a, in a peculiar way. But let's start with... Um, a default canvas, and I, I will start some explanations about what's going on. So this is, for people who know Canvas, a very um, familiar view. You have your, um, your, your, your big canvas, and you have different widgets, as we call them. So a browser here, a note here. Maybe the first thing you notice is the info panel. It has gone a lot smaller. Um, we felt that the info panel is, was taking a lot of all the real estate of the, of the uh, which was not really necessary, especially when you start using it on your on your laptop, for instance. We, we felt that the title for the info panel was was uh, quite big. So that's one of the changes we made. Um, other things we have done is is the way that the user interface looks and. Um, as you know, we have a title bar. Um, I'm not sure how well you can see this. Maybe you can get some feedback, JPL. But so I can actually change everything in the title bar. So I can, you know, call this. I can call this mode number one, for instance. And then on the sidebar, I have my other menus. It comes normally with the pin menu, as you as you as you know it from before. So you can pin it, so you can move it. Um, then the other one is a base annotation menu, so your colors, or and then extra menus, and then it comes to the other menus. And these will be slightly different for each um, widget or each function. They're actually basically the same functions as you had in 2.0. They just presented in a more modern way and in an easier way also to use for individual mouse if you're using it on your laptop. Um, before I go a bit further, I will um, show a little bit, actually make a drawing here, and I will uh, present it to you straight away. So, let's make this mine, that's nice on the eye. I'm going to present this note now to you, so you won't see me anymore, you will see the note and what I'm drawing in it. There you go, choose the note now. So, what I want to talk about is where the changes are made in Canvas 3.0 compared to Compass 2.0. And I want to take a little bit of a step back and talk about local clients, uh, Canvas Connect server, shared canvases, all this kind of stuff, and explain a bit what is going on and how we, why we call things what we call them and where the changes have happened. It starts with, um, let's, let's call it here, I have the video wall. Um, yeah, that's connected to, or the computer connected to it. So we call this a client. This is a video wall. We call this a Canvas client, computer here. So, and other things we have are, for instance, I could have a laptop. Also run a client, that would be another client. Any canvas is on here, which I would so fix. What I'm doing here now is we store here, we call them 
basically local because local campus. And it will be the same here. So anything in the computer which you're working on is a local campus. Then we have basically call it the campus connect server or the campus server. And these are connected these because the server can basically be anywhere you want. Um, many, most of our customers have them on, on, on premises. Um, for instance, the demo server we'll be using today is, is based in America. Um, so different clients, if you call them, are connected to the server. And any campuses here we call shared campuses. I'll just call it shared. Sorry, it's not very clear what's been on the side here. So, because I can, any canvas in the server, I can work from, from my laptop, from my video wall, I can work on it at the same time, and this is what I'm going to show today. This is where a lot of changes have happened in the Canvas Connect server. If you think about user management, we did not have user management before. Now we have the possibilities of giving different user rights to different people in the organization. And um, I will talk a lot more about that later. Um, but at first, like I said, I wanted to explain you exactly with this drawing what we are talking about and where things are happening and where things are not happening. So what you can still do, I'll, I'll go back to the camera. What you still can do is walk up to the video wall and just open a canvas just like, like you did with Canvas 2.0. So there, there is no change in that sense. That is still exactly the same. And we, we felt that that's a very important feature. Um, we have many customers who have, for instance, only a single client. So of course, you must be able to use that. Uh, but also for ease of use. You know, you go to a meeting room, you want to be able to start anything on the wall straight away. OK, now if we, um, the other things we, um, a lot of the other magic happens is on the shared campus. So I'm, I'm going to talk a lot more about that. To control the shared canvas or to actually open a server, we go to our canvas list. And here on the side, I have several servers here. We both can have some demo sets up, set up so you can actually have more than one server. Um, but I want to show you what happens when I'm going to sign into a server. And to do that, um, I will show you how it happens. I will actually mirror my phone because that's part of the part of the setup. Just a moment. So now you should see the screen and, and my phone. So when I want to sign in, I press on the sign in button. There's a sign in with me on the server. And it gives me different options. This one is set up, it actually comes up with a QR code. And as you know, if you are in a, on a video wall like this, you would be in a meeting. The last thing I want to do on the video wall is put in my username and my password for everybody to see. So for this reason, I have this QR code. As you see, I put my phone there, it sees it. I click the, and it goes to, basically to a link. And since my phone already knows who I am, that I'm Gerald Smith from Multitection, and it knows my password, I don't even have to fill it in anymore. The first time you will have to do it, but after that it will remember it. I just press authenticate and I'm logged in. So that's how easy you get to log in on the video wall without anybody else seeing what you're doing basically. They don't see your username, your password when you're logging in. I will go back to um, put the camera view again. There we go. So now we have. We, we walk in and um, actually the first thing you will see when you log in, and I'm not sure how well you can see this, I will try to zoom in or I can show it later here. So after you have been upgrading from 2.0 or 2.7, sorry, or, or any two version to 3.0, all the canvases which were which there were have been stored in a so-called 
guest account. Um, we have added a guest account for basically you allow anybody to walk also store stuff in the shared as a shared canvas as a guest. So you wouldn't need any username or password to store some stuff there. And since before we didn't have this, we had to store it somewhere. So we stored everything in the guest account. And basically the first thing would be wise to do is when you sign in, check which are the canvases you want to store in your own account and maybe not give everybody access to. So that's, that's the uh, part of that has already happened. Uh, of course, on, on our side, we already did this work. Um, so I have already canvases here. And I will start opening in um, one of the canvases we've been working on. So what else? And welcome to Canvas 3.0. So a couple of things you will notice here. Um, very important one, I think, is this one, the browser. What I've now opened is a browser, and actually it's of my OneDrive, my personal OneDrive. So you need a password, a user and a password to sign into this. Um, and you notice the browser remembered this. So I'm straight away, I'm straight away in it. If I would be signed in as a different user, you would not see this browser. So this is a very important feature that it remembers your, your settings of your browser, basically. So your username and password where you can sign into. And that's, uh, that's, we know from customer feedback, that's been a lot of customers have been waiting for this. That's, because this helps a lot with, with setting up information like you see here. I don't need to sign in anymore. It's already done, it's taken care of. Um, I can in a moment also show you how it looks if I would be a different user on, the, on this wall. Um, it's it's uh, actually very easy to do that. I'll do it very quick. I just split the wall. So, it in the middle. So here, it's trying to sign me in. Then I'll just say cancel. I go in as a guest. So, here. And I'm looking for the canvas. And you notice, it asks me here now to sign in because. As this user, I have no credentials for this for this browser. So that's a, that's also a safety feature. So I'm signed in on a website where I don't want other people to sign in for it. So it's my personal website or my, my private data or company sensitive data. So this is a very important new feature of Compass uh, 3.0. Um, Looking at other stuff, I'll, 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 what I will do now is I will now start looking more at the laptop side, what is happening. Um, just a moment, I'll switch the screen. Okay, what you see here uh, at the moment is the login screen of the, um, of the dashboard, as we call it. And you can sign in with all or you can use it. So what we've done, so somehow means, basically I sign in with my company credentials. So it's set up this way. This, is, this can be easily done by an administrator that I sign in with my multi faction email and my multi faction password. It's connected with that system. That's, that's what we've done here. Um, you could use it with QR code, the same as I just showed with my phone, but you know, there's also here this tab, remember me, which you will see on the, uh, and this basically means once I've signed in on this laptop, it remembers me. So I just press here, sign in with someone, and I'm signed in. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to put in a password or anything. It, it has remembered me. So here we're looking at the canvases we met. So this is my name. There's some other people here. There's, there's a guest account. And I can look at different users, you know, with you if you want to do that. And you can make groups. This is for the administrator. I have been I will talk a lot about that now. Um, what I'll do now, I'll go to this canvas where we just looked at. And you can see a little bit what we what we see here. So you get a you get a small preview, which is you know, which is nice. Um, but the sharing is getting very interesting. 
So the image is sharing what I what I can do. So Jacob, my colleague, who is also here, he, he's an editor on this. So he has access rights for this camera at the moment. So if he wanted to use it, he, he, he could have changed things. Um, I could add, for instance, I can say the guests can be viewers and add it. There it is. So now we have the guests also added as viewers. So now everybody can basically see it. And also from outside the organization. Or you could have all users. That's another one. So that would basically mean everybody within your organization as well. So you Another very useful feature is this link. This is really, I, I, it seems a small thing, but I really think it's a sort of a game changer in that sense. That basically, there's a link to a camera you can copy. So I'll, I'll just copy it, show you what happens. So if I would take this link, I could for instance send it in an invite. If I now paste the link here, it brings me to a page and it gives me a link. If I click this link, it will automatically open Canvas slides with that, with that exact same Canvas. And you see again, um, the browser looks different again here because I have no rights in this client yet on that, on that browser. So now I have full access to this and this is, of course, this, this link you have there, or this, this copying of this link, is a great feature for, for instance, invitations. You have a session, and you want everybody to, to, to look at the same canvas. You send that link with the invitation, and everybody just clicks it. You don't even need to have that server set up. It doesn't matter. So anybody who has your canvas client running somewhere with that link, they can have access to that canvas. So that's a, that's a really, um, neat feature for making sure that when you have a meeting, and especially these days when not everybody's in the office or in different places, that you all are looking at the same numbers. Okay, so maybe I'll, I'll show some other stuff. So let's look on the uh, the easy drag and drop from Windows for internet live here and. Uh, Video file I want to drop in there. I can just drop in there and so that's how no, that, that's a, that's an easy way. That's that that work also two point zero, but but actually advances a bit further. I will show you what that means. We have a lot of copy paste features, and that's especially on a laptop, I would say, or, or on, on the desktop client, a, a huge benefit. Um, I'll show some examples. Here, for instance, I have some, I have a, a link for, um, so I copied this link, and I have the space here. And I'll put my cursor here and I'll just say control V. And so now I can just put, I can copy paste anything from Windows into Canvas and also back. And you could put it in notes or wherever you want to put it, also in between items. And, and again, this is this is makes it get much easier integration into the into the desktop and the laptop. Um, okay, some other things I want to show, and I will show them now from the video wall, is how our presentations and a bit about more about the user interface. I, I think we'll come back maybe later for questions. If there are questions, I'm, ah, I see there is a QA, sorry.
So Rene Simmons asked, is this the server version? Um, so yes, yes and no. We, we like I think maybe I already answered that with you that um, the shared canvas is always on the server. So the things I'm showing here and on the laptop, that is indeed the ones connect, canvas connect server as we call it. Um, is, did that answer your question, Rene? Just, just type in there if, if um, just let me know if, if not, then I'll, then I'll come back to it later. What we'll do later as well, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give you some sound if we, at the end of the part, and then we can, uh, we can have more Q&As as well. So I will now share with you my, um, the canvas on the video wall, and just to show me what's, what's going on with different with different menus. So at the moment, these bottom buttons on the side look very similar to the ones they, they, uh, they, they were in, in Canvas 3.0. Most probably the next version, you will see some more changes there, being more in, in the same line as the rest of the user interface that we're using here. Um, but let's start with the pin menu is, is the same as it was before. If you move things around, it will, it will flash showing you that you know, you're, you're pinned. Nothing changed there. I think here are some changes in the uh, in the in, call it the main menu, the canvas menu. Uh, we still have the zoom to all the content, but the settings menu has a lot of extra things at the moment. So this is something I want to show here. Um, background, same as before. You can put images as background. Um, you can choose what you want. So, for instance, if I would choose an image. Just drag it there and it puts the image on the background. So that's, and yeah, it's not the best image I choose here, so I'll go back to the color. You create, so password, now that's an interesting one. So password protection is still possible on local campuses. So for people having only a video or only a client on your, on your, on your level and no server, you can still use, you can still protect your data because you don't have that user um, access possibility and the user permissions as what you need a Canvas Connect server for that. But here it says remote canvases don't use passwords. So you have to use user and group based access control instead. Other one is a demo canvas. As you remember, maybe if, if I make something a demo canvas, it means that I can play around with it, make any changes. As soon as I close it and reopen it, it's back to its original state. So that's still there. Codis. So if you maybe you remember the our codis markers, uh, the markers our our video streams can read. So you can set here basically. You can set codes markers and you can then control the codes markers from the menu if it's associated with this canvas, uh, yes, yes or not. And then another one, interesting one is the, it's the default canvas. So that's, remember, on the welcome screen, one of the items was open the default canvas. That's what you can set here. You can say which canvas is the default canvas. Um, and that's, that's not done at all in the, in the settings menu. See there's some more Q and A. Okay. Um, next one, I if maybe I want to talk a bit about the presentation list. Looks slightly different, but the function itself is is very similar to. Um, to do the presentation we had before, there's no, no changes in it. So I can basically drag anything in it. It will, it will move in there. If I if would add a, a movie in it, I can set that it's in a, in a, in an image. Actually, I could do that with a plus sign and add the image here. I can still control locations and I could say, want to play the video and I want the logo at the end. So, 
this play things to the presentation as, as we did before in the presentation mode. So that's that feature is, is exactly the same as 2.0. It's just we change the layout slightly a little bit. I'll, I'll show it again. But it's uh, I just wanted to show it again because it's it's I, I love it as a feature in, in the end um, of, a, of, of a meeting with a, a customer, for instance, you'll be working together on a canvas, make a nice summary and go over it in a in a sort of presentation mode and see. Um, it, it's it's I, I love it for that. The canvas list I already showed. Maybe what I haven't showed yet is uh, well, I already showed the, the search function we have. Also the, uh, the the list view, and you can basically select stuff based on, on different stuff like on how modified or how big they are or just the name, which is mostly what we use, of course. Um, that's that's another. So that's that's really been involved in a lot of changes that we made. Um, here on the left side, on the left side of this, you see uh, the server we logged into. So I'm uh, now collapsing it. You see, I'm only logged into one server. I still have access to the other ones, otherwise, it would show something else. But I'm not signed in as a user. So if I would go in with another server, I would be a guest. So I have guest access. Now, it, here it shows a little called an avatar at the moment, a G. If I click on it, it tells me basically who is signed into this server. Um, on a, normally on a, on a video like that, like this, that's not going automatically. Um, on a laptop version, I would actually you can set it that way, and it's also sort of standard that you are automatically signed in. So we remember you. So you you just open your canvas on your laptop, and it will automatically sign you in to the server. And this can be more than one server in case your company has more than one server. I think most companies have one, but if they have more, that's also possible. It can automatically remember different signing uh, instances on, on different servers. So uh, that's that's a really neat feature on the laptop again, that you don't have to every time have to sign in. You do it once, and after that, it knows it's your laptop. Of course, if you want, you can sign out, and then next time you go in, somebody has to sign in. So it's not like, it will always sign you in, but if you don't sign out of it, next time you open it, it will open it with you signed in in the laptop. That is not on the video. On the video, we don't do that. And uh, basically, well, the, the reason is clear. I mean, everybody can walk in here and, and you would not like to be signed in all the time. Okay, information. Give some more information about the license, the license uh, type, and of course the version and the mode. And this is the mode out of which I was talking a little bit about. We we don't talk about what, single user or multi user. Uh, a big screen you would call multi user. Uh, a, a single user would really be a desktop or a laptop like we have here. And on a single user, you it will sort of automatically it would also set your the setting this way that your passwords are automatically remembered. Again, this can all be changed if you don't want that to happen, but that's the sort of the automatic setup. Now, other things you have here are your, your video inputs. Uh, this drives, so anything I can, uh, so maybe I'll, uh, I'll show something. Let me see what's just an old. So with this time frame, it's now I track in, to, in um, a, a PowerPoint presentation. And uh, actually, we, we can open this. This also worked in 2.0. I just want to show you how it now looks. So we have some, uh, some different features here. So I can just press RDP. And actually now it's opening an RDP session. So it's connected to another server. But I can control it from here, just like it, just like it would be in, just like it would be running on the wall. There we are. And actually, remember that I was there before. Let's make it a bit 
bigger. So now I'm just interacting with it. Go to different places and I could start a presentation or whatever. And well, that's and you notice, oh, we just now you notice what happens if you went very big. The actually I'm gonna switch over to camera so you can see what I'm pointing at. So it went very big, and my side menu jumped to the other side because there was no space here anymore. And the same is for the title bar. If it would be too high, it would jump to the bottom. So we always look for a place where we can put the put the menu. If I go more to the right, it'll come back to its normal place again. So that's part of the new user interface that you always have that at the, at the right place. And of course, the, the video conference I already showed. So I am one of my video output is connected to the video conference. And that's what I'm using all the time for switching between campuses. Um, actually, what I'll do, I'll zoom out a bit. So what you see is on this side, I had another section open all the time. And, uh, of canvas and different setups which I can share with the uh, video output. So, you know, if I would take, for instance, here was a laptop screen. Now the laptop is shared with you and I go back to the camera again and I'm sharing the camera again with you. So that's a very easy way of sharing different um, video inputs actually to uh, so, somebody was asking, or something, can you add a PowerPoint? Yes, 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 you can. Um, you can, you could, but that will, when you add a PowerPoint, you cannot just make a PowerPoint on the other computer and then just move it here. But with any changes it would make on it, on the other one, it's automatically updated here on the canvas. So, I added it via the disk menu, or I could drag it from my laptop. I could add a PowerPoint file or an Excel file. You could just drag it from your uh, what's from your desktop uh, to uh, to your to the canvas, um, and it will just import it automatically like that. And after that, all the changes you make to it, which which are done in the RDP, in the RDP server, are automatically updated in the final here. More questions. Video inputs. Yes. So um, I was just talking about that. So I showed different video inputs. I will show some more here. So for instance, we have here in a Google Meet box connected. We have a Google Chrome uh, as, as proxy connected. And which I already used before was the uh, Apple AirPlay with my phone to show you what's happening on my phone. Uh, so you get all kinds of different video inputs connected to the uh, to the to the system, and you can switch between them like, like I just showed to your video outputs. You can basically put them anywhere you want, take snapshot of anything you make, and and uh, and, and make annotations of it. It's that's that's the that's the power of Canvas, and that's that has not changed. Last but not least is the, um, the social participants. So a small menu here where, and what I could do here is follow a person. So at the moment, if I just tap on this one, I'll let me switch to zoom in on my laptop. So I, I've zoomed in to, uh, to what, actually what I do is, yes, here. So I zoomed in to the PDF, if I now click on this one, People follow what I'm doing on the laptop. So I move from the laptop to a different place. It's just following it. So that's basically call it the follow me or the follow mode that you that you can use. Um, maybe a nice feature also to show is you can now easily get rid of your work. Um, uh, info panel. What I will do is I'll zoom in a bit more for you guys. Go. 
So I can get the info panel like this, or get it disappeared like this. It's, it's okay on the video wall like this, this high, and I'm, I'm big enough, but we also understand on, on bigger video walls that might be problematic. So I can still do it from the settings menu as well. Um, show the info panel. Now it's back here. So again, it's a bit of one of these features where you want to make it easy to work on a, on a laptop, for instance, you just want to slide it out of the way if you want to. Uh, on, on bigger video walls where, you, where not everybody can reach the top, you have this menu on the side as well, the settings menu. I think that almost maybe what I will show you still is how it looks when you would sign in as a as a view only person. So I made this canvas now as a guest. I would only be able to view this, so I cannot change it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sign out. So I'm going to my server. I just sign out, and I go to this menu. And you see, I'm not signed in anymore. So go there. There it is. And now we notice it looks different. First of all, what I already told you, the browser is not is not signed in. If you see some of the buttons on the side, they're also widened out. I cannot I cannot look at the other video inputs, and, and I cannot put on my uh, or, or extend the. So I can look, but I cannot change anything on the canvas. So this is just an extra feature if you want people to maybe check your canvas, but you don't want people to interact with it yet or make changes to it because then you have a presentation tomorrow morning and you don't want it to be changed before that. I think this comes to the end of the introduction. I'll thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, just shoot us an email, sales at notedation.com or support at notedation.com. And of course, we'll always be ready to help you give some answers to that. Thank you.